call hmm. for a motion to approve the agenda as presented without change. So moved. Support. Okay, the motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 Uh, call for a motion to approve two sets of meetings from the March 12th and March 19th uh, meetings. 2019. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board approve the uh, minutes as presented for March 12th and the March uh, 19th meetings. Support. The motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, now would be the time in our agenda for citizens non-agenda item. If there's anybody here that would like to make comment on an item that is not on the agenda, now would be the time to make those comments. Uh, Melissa? Please. Commissioner uh, Daub, Wayne County. Thank you. Um, my name is Melissa Daub. I'm the Wayne County Commissioner for District 10, which is Plymouth and Canton. And I just wanted to let everyone know about a town hall that I'm holding on roads. It's going to be on Thursday, April 4th at 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And it will be over at the summit in uh, the big ballroom. Um, we're going to have our trustee Summer Foster speak on the Canton Road millage and also a member of Wayne County Department of Public Services talk about Wayne County's plans and processes regarding road repair and road maintenance. I do have some um, flyers. I put a couple in the back and then there's some in the front of this building as well. So if you want to grab one and I hope to see you all there. Thank you. Um, I see uh, a couple uh, young men in the middle here. Did you want to speak tonight or at another meeting? Yeah, tonight. tonight. Okay. Um, could we allow this gentleman here would like to make a public comment? Oh, yeah. Uh, I guess that's Agendas are in the back. Uh, there's a set back there. You can grab a copy anytime. Go ahead. Uh, would you like to make public comment, sir? Yes. Okay. Uh, on an item that's on the agenda or something? Okay, why don't you go take a look at the agenda. All right, and then uh, the young men uh, could please come to the podium now. We'll have you go ahead and make your presentation. Yeah, I'll go together if you're all going to speak. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Kane Pryor. Kane, if I could ask you guys, uh, wait for each of, before you do speak, give us your name and address. And then um, I ask that you each limit your comments to three minutes. Okay. My name's Kane Pryor. Uh, you want like my street address? 44359 Regis Court, Canton, Michigan. Um, my name is Caleb Roberts, 44661 Jeffrey Circle. Canton. Oh, Canton. Hello, uh, I'm Rafael Cuevas, and uh, I live on uh, 867 Princess Drive. We're here today to talk about getting a skate park built in Canton. Hi, my name is Kane Pryor, and today I'm here to speak with you about the importance of getting a skate park built in the city of Canton and health and wellness, how it plays a big role in skateboarding. If I didn't grow up skateboarding, I would probably be like most of the other kids in my age, sitting around the house playing video games. I know some parents struggle with getting their kids to go outside. My parents struggle with keeping me inside. According to www.leadforrareobesity.com, 20% of the adolescents in the United States between the age of 12 to 19 are obese. I want that number to change. I want a place in my community that gets kids out of the house and, get, and gets them active. I want the next generation to be healthy. I don't want the next generation thinking it's okay to sit inside all day playing video games. To wrap it up, I really think we should have a skate park built in Plymouth, or well, built in Plymouth, Canton, Canton, because we're here speaking to you guys today, because it will benefit our community and it will benefit our, the youth. Other cities around us have cool skate parks that I go to with my friends all the time. To list a few, Ann Arbor Skate Park, Riley Skate Park in Farmington Hills, Drake Skate Park in West Bloomfield, the skate park at Livonia Rec Center, uh, the skate park called Concrete Jungle in Westland, and Garden City Skate Park. Now, building a skate park, the, now they're building a skate park in Detroit on the riverfront. Me and all my friends are very excited about that. I've always wanted a skate park in my own city, so I didn't have to bug my mom to drive me to the skate parks in other cities. I would really like you guys to think about getting a skate park built in Canton. Thank you. And now my friends will talk. Hello. 
I'm here, uh, my name is Caleb Roberts, and I'm here to tell you why our community needs a skate park. We believe that there is an epidemic facing the youth of our community. Mental illness has affected the youth of America for too long. In 2017, 11% of teens from ages 12 to 17 reported to have at least one severe depressive episode relating thoughts of suicide. Nationally, only 12% of youth who reported their illness received con consistent treatment. But often, youth with emotional or mental problems uh, cases, it isn't clear if the mental health problems are being taken into consideration for appropriate accommodations in children's schooling. Plymouth Kent Community School Districts and parents of our community have clear rules and guidelines on how to handle an act of self-harm or harm on someone else, but there is no guidelines on how to prevent this from happening in the first place. We believe there's a social problem today caused by a lack of attention to children's physical care. Most kids who reported to having mental disorders are also reported that they didn't participate in any school sports or after school activities. Some kids didn't enjoy playing sports like football, basketball, or any sports like that, but that doesn't mean we have to leave them without physical activity. We need a place where kids can go be physical and just relax outside without worrying about any social stigma. We want to build a skate park that promotes all around well-being, and we believe if we can build this soon, we'll cut out depression and other mental illnesses from the source of our community. Hello, uh, I'm Raphael. And uh, growing up, I never had a place to just go and escape from everyday problems in a healthy way. And I feel like putting a skate park in Canton, you would give a lot of other kids an escape in a healthy way. Because as soon as I started uh, uh, hanging out with Kane, Caleb, and um, everyone else from uh, Ghetto Grinders, I started to snap back to reality and start trying new things. One of the first times we hung out, we went to the skate park. Uh, I fell, got a little bruised up, but um, I learned a lot about skateboarding. It isn't just pe uh, pushing a piece of wood on wheels with your feet. It demands commitment, coordination, and a lot of uh, stamina. I am sure having a skate park in Canton would uh, do the community a lot of good. Good presentation, thank you. Um, the, Greg, I think I had mentioned that these, these gentlemen were going to be coming by, so uh, we'll take that offline to staff and see what we can, see what they have to say. Um, is there any additional public comment? Is, yes, sir. Okay, that, that'll be actually a public hearing, which we're going to go into very quickly. So that will be the next uh, major item on the agenda. Is there any additional public comment? Any additional public comment? Uh, and, okay, we'll open a public hearing and we'll give you very specific time to discuss sidewalks and your concerns. Um, Anne Marie, please. Uh, please. Terrorist attacks on New Zealand's Muslim community affects all communities of humanity and faith. Canton Township stands in solidarity with the Muslim community today as we mourn the loss of innocent lives in New Zealand. Canton Township is a welcoming community and we recommit ourselves to the safety of all of our residents no matter their faith, race, gender, gender identity, or sexual orientation. We stand against all hate crimes, no matter if they happen in our township or on other side of the globe. We ask all residents to reject in ignorance and fear and elevate the unifying principles of inclusion, mutual respect, appreciation, and understanding. Thank you. Could I have a motion to have the last two presenters' information entered into the uh, formal record? So moved. Whatever the motion is presented, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. Um, <coughs> call for a motion for a payment of the bills. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, That's what we just voted on was, uh, as well as uh, both, both, both presentations. Yep. Mr. Supervisor, I make the motion we pay the bills. Support. Okay. Good. Those in favor of paying the bills again this month, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Very good. All right. Now uh, we move into a public hearing. Uh, let's see. We're busy night. Consider holding a public hearing for the 2019 sidewalk repair program. 
Mr. Supervisor, I move to open the public hearing uh, to hear comments on the necessity of sidewalk repairs pursuant to the township sidewalk ordinance, sidewalk repair program policy, and as provided in Public Act 80 of the Public Acts of 1989 at 7.14 p.m. Second. Oh. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please say aye. 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 Okay, the public hearing is now open. Um, in summary, the sidewalk ordinance became effective July 1st, 1999, and was amended on August 2nd, 2001, Chapter 62, Article 2, Sections 31 and 36. The ordinance was adopted uh, to protect the public health, safety, welfare of the citizens of the Charter Township of Canton through adoption of regulations concerning construction, maintenance of sidewalks within the township. The sidewalk ordinance requires township hold a public hearing regarding necessity of the repairs for the 2019 sidewalk repair program. And I think at this point, uh, public comment before presentation, presentation, then public comment. All right, let's go ahead and Bill, uh, Sir Chap will lead us to I'll, the uh, presentation. I'll run through a presentation on our sidewalk repair program quickly, and then uh, we'll take uh, any questions from uh, residents. Uh, and at the end, if there's any specific questions right about your property, our engineer, Erica, is in the back room and she'd be glad to answer those in detail. So I'll run through this real quick. Uh, the sidewalk repair program uh, started uh, due to a court case uh, back in 1997. Supreme Court of Michigan determined that townships are responsible for maintenance of sidewalks within the right of uh, public rights of way. In Canton, that includes rights of way owned by Wayne County and MDOT, the state. Uh, sidewalk ordinance uh, was created in 1999 and sets up this program to fix sidewalks. Uh, it began uh, in 1999, 2000. Uh, we did a first cycle through the entire township in 16 years. Uh, we looked at all the sidewalks in all the platted subdivisions. The second cycle we started in, I believe, 2016 and we are going to try to hit the entire township in a 10-year cycle. Uh, these are the, actually 2015 is when we started the new cycle. Uh, 15 was our first year. Uh, 16, we did not have a program due to excessive concrete costs. Uh, we've done 17 and 18, and we're moving into zone four uh, in 2019. Uh, every year, we're always working on warranty work from the previous year, the current years, uh, assessments and looking at the future for next year's marking and doing quantities of sidewalks. Uh, we, uh, we take issues from residents at any time during the year um, and we are usually targeting a specific zone so we're not all over the township, we're usually in one zone and we list the different subdivisions we're in this year. Um, inspections are done. Uh, by uh, throughout the year, we also take complaints throughout the community. So if there's a complaint at an at a an area that's not within our zone, our inspectors go out and add those in. Essentially, if you see markings on your sidewalks, the red dot indicates that the township is going to take responsibility for that uh, for certain reasons, and we'll go over those uh, in in the near future. Uh, green dots are determined to be resident responsibility. Uh, this is the sidewalk ordinance uh, citation, um, and we'll give you some examples of what we see. The sidewalk ordinance sets out a number of criteria that are specific that allow us to mark them for repair. Displacement of three quarters of an inch, you've probably seen this, that becomes a trip hazard. Uh, in any five foot linear feet of sidewalk, if more than 50% is scaled, uh, that will be marked for replacement. Spider cracking is common in some subdivisions from the 80s and 90s. Um, there's a number of reasons as to why that occurs. Uh, one thing when you see spider cracking, it tends to indicate there's some pressure within the sidewalk slabs and sometimes when you pull one out, the other ones pop out also. Uh, if the sidewalk has more, uh, more than two cracks of a quarter inch uh, in any two linear feet uh, section, it gets marked for repairs. Uh, if it has settled and if there's an area of ponding of water, uh, those often are marked for, for repairs. Um, this is what's called a, a back pitch or a back slope. Generally, you want sidewalks to slope towards the road. 
This one is quite extreme. You can see it pitched backwards towards the, uh, towards the lawn. Um, sometimes we run into utility repairs and uh, we go after the utility companies. That's generally not something that the residents are going to deal with. Uh, the other items that the township will take include areas where our sanitary and water structures are. Uh, those are often taken by the township due to the structure, the manhole in the center of the concrete. Um, storm sewer, storm drains uh, also can cause issues with sidewalks. Uh, in many cases, we take the slabs immediately adjacent to the storm drains and the other ones occasionally will be marked for the resident. Uh, we have a uh, long-standing program to upgrade the ADA ramps, the ramps between crossings of roads. Uh, the township commits a certain amount of funding every year to fix those in the neighborhoods as we move through. Um, and these are, these are the guidance on where we use the uh, red uh, detectable warnings. The, um, in the subdivisions, there are often sidewalks in the common areas or sidewalk fronting a public road, uh, Lily, Haggerty, uh, Cherry Hill, Palmer. Those actually are assessed to the individual associations. So we deal not only with the residents, but with the associations. Um, another issue that often comes up are the driveway approaches on either side of the sidewalk. Um, and it, it, it's just here as a note that we're really there to make sure the sidewalk is correct, not to fix the driveway. On occasion, driveways do have to come out. And, uh, and on occasion, residents ask the contractor to, to repair their driveways. Um, the other thing we uh, want to mention in our, in our presentation here is that we have identified many gaps over the years in sidewalks, and we have filled many gaps. Uh, Erica estimates here between uh, 2001 and 2014, we actually repaired almost uh, six miles of gap. So we have a, a pretty extensive program this year uh, to fill additional gaps. Um, I won't go into these details. If you, if you want this information, we, we do post this on the web. Um, but we have a pretty extensive gap program this year. The Township uh, Board has dedicated 250000 to GAPS this year. It's our largest program we've ever had. Uh, public notice for the necessity of repairs. That's really why we're here tonight. Um, estimate letters are done in the fall. We do the estimates and we send them out after the first of the year, uh, notifying residents of the public hearing, which is tonight. Uh, which slabs are homeowner responsibility, and we give an estimate based on what we looked at last year. Um, it also has all the contact information and uh, notifies you of this public hearing tonight. Um, the way our program is set up, we've given you the notice. If you're here for the sidewalks, you have 60 days actually from tonight to do the work on your own. Uh, there are a number of people that that retain their own contractors and do their own work. Um, the standards are the same. If you're going to do your own work, uh, the work still has to meet the standards of the township and, and the county. If you do end up doing your own work in front of your, your property, uh, you will be required to get a county permit because they own the right of way. Um, if you choose not to do anything in the next 60 days, it will be done this summer. Our contractor will be starting in the neighborhoods in uh, June, in mid-June. So uh, June 1st is typically when we start. Uh, we try to finish within the summer months. Um, I, I can't really predict if we'll get there uh, this year. We, weather delays and other things come up. Um, but we do hope to complete everything that's outstanding this year and not carry over anything. Uh, so that's a summary of the program, and I'll, I guess it's, it's open now for public comment. Be, if we begin in the front of the room and just work our way back, so sir, if you go ahead and lead us off, um, come to the podium and we ask that you uh, share your name and address. Um, and if you have any questions or concerns, um, now would be the time to, to get them out there. 
Anwar Raja, I live at 43486 Parkle Way, Canton, Michigan. I have been sent estimate $140.30. The slab which was marked, there was a maybe one inch crack at the end. I have the photographs over here. It may be a wastage of money to repair this one. I can repair it by myself with hydraulic cement and it will be okay. All other slab is good. So, I mean, I feel that it's unnecessary to pay $140 for a slab which is perfectly all right. So I took the picture of the hole I can show you over there nearby. So this is a small corner one inch. It's a crack. I can repair it with the hydraulic cement and it will work fine. What I'm ask you to do is talk to Erica um, after the public hearing in the back. Erica, can you raise your hand? Okay, Erica is our, our engineer that's responsible okay. for the sidewalk program. Right. Let her talk to you about your specific situation, and she will, she will share with you what we can do. The board does not make that decision. Well, all right. I mean, basically, it's an unnecessary estimation or unnecessary wastage of the money. We have plenty of other stuff which can be taken care of. In our subdivision, Barclay Way, there is a ditch uh, on the Palmer Road and between our Barclay Way. Uh, our homeowner association, they approach many times that uh, ditch Water stands over there after the rain, and during the winter, it's an ice sheet over there. So it's never been taken care of by the, uh, I mean, the township, because it's the part of the township. It's not the part of our, uh, I mean, subdivision. If it had been the part of our subdivision, we have been taken care of it. But it's a city, part of the city road, there is a ditch, and it's not only one year, two year. I've been living over there from 13th year and I saw almost it's there, and it's getting deeper and deeper and deeper. Yeah. The county's uh, jurisdictional responsibility, and we do have with us in the audience uh, Melissa Dobb, our uh, Wayne County Commissioner. Uh, Melissa, could you raise your hand? I don't know if you have cards with you, but that would be an issue that would be a county issue, not a Canton Township. All right. But we can certainly make those connections for you. All right. Sir, would you like to speak? Erica, do, do you want to meet people in the, in the lobby like we typically do? You want to do that now or wait till we're through? Okay. Okay. Hi, my name is uh, Ali Atris. I live on uh, Hanford Road, 45599 Hanford Road. I get a letter about um, some uh, sidewalk repairs. And so I have a, a general concern about the policy or the program uh, that you guys have. With, with all due respect, I mean, it has been running for a while, I guess. But uh, so my common sense kind of, you know, <laughs> told me to, <laughs> to come and speak because it didn't make much sense to me. Uh, it says here on the top of the letter, in an effort to promote safety as well as improve the appearance of our neighborhoods, the Canton community implemented a sidewalk repair program in 1999. Uh, so in my opinion, um, the, the program or uh, the policy has flaws uh, because I can tell you right away that it's not ensuring safety or uh, the appearance of the neighborhood. And I tell you why. Um, so I was, um, I guess, picked <laughs> On, uh, for my sidewalk and um, more so for my apron, the, the driveway apron, because it was, it's complete, I mean, it's really, it looks bad. Um, but the problem is on my street, there's probably within one mile, there's probably like 13 or 14 houses, I can tell you that have worse problem than mine. And they were not picked. So I called yesterday and asked, <laughs> So how come was, I was singled out, you know? If you want to ensure safety, then, you know, you get to tell everybody to do it because if you, I fix mine and then my next door neighbor has the same problem, it's not fixed, so how is that safety? That's not safety and it doesn't improve the looks of the neighborhood. And in my case, actually, <laughs> my two next door neighbors have worse problem on their apron than mine, but they weren't, uh, you know, I guess picked because I don't see the, the green markings, whatever. And so I asked, well, why was I li the lucky one? <laughs> I was told that uh, there was a, a, a complaint or something. I said, who complained? 
And uh, she said, well, actually, you, sir, did complain. I said, I didn't complain. The reason I came to the, actually, the township is I had a question. And maybe that concerns also the Wayne County um, uh, lady here. Um, since I moved into my house uh, about four or five years ago, I noticed on the uh, street, uh, on the drain side, that it's always wet. If it rains or doesn't rain, there's always a collection of water uh, for my neighbors and myself. And uh, I figured that, you know, that can do a job on, on concrete. Uh, so I wanted to know who, who's responsible or uh, is that Wayne County? Is it the township? Uh, is it, uh, yeah. Sanford is county also, Wayne County also. Yeah. So basically that's why I came in to, to uh, ask question about, about, you know, uh, is that a drainage problem that can be fixed or, because, you know, I, I see, again, on Hanford, there's a lot of houses that have the same problem. Uh, so I, I was told, uh, I can call the county. Uh, they didn't know. So I called the county. I, I left a ticket. I never heard anything back. But now I get this, the letter so <laughs> that I was <laughs> picked for that. So I kind of like, you know, it's, it's not fair. I mean, I told them on myself, and the estimate now is $3,400. <laughs> I mean, so. I guarantee you, you're not alone. And if we were, I, I guarantee you, you're not alone. If we were in the neighborhood, we looked at yours. We probably kept going door to door, and there are probably other neighbors are getting letters too if they haven't gotten them yet. Uh, I didn't see any markings, uh, and I was told that no, there's no other. But I mean, for the same talking, if the inspector came to my house, I mean, it's really not hard to see the the next two door neighbors. <laughs> their, their apron is. So how come they didn't like get marked, or, or the sidewalk is even in some places worse than mine? I, I actually complained about the, the apron, not the side. The sidewalk is like not a big deal. I can put some fillers for it, and it should be fine, like asphalt or something. The only thing I'd like to reemphasize, and this goes back to whenever the, the lawsuit was that Canton was named in, that led to these ordinances that exist. Um, was it the state? Kristen, where well, that led us to having putting in these ordinances years ago. Uh, so a pair of residents that sued. There was, I guess, adjoining lawsuits. One of them involved Canton. The other one involved, I think it was Redford Township. But it was residents who were injured on sidewalks and sued. Canton's defense was it's within the county road right away. And the court said, the local government, including townships, is responsible for those sidewalks. Uh, uh, if you have neighbors who have deteriorating sidewalks, if their door hasn't been knocked on, it will be. Because we go from one end of the township, start over again, uh, do it all over again. Sir, but that's not what I was told. I was told only if there's a complaint or it's brought to the county's attention uh, I mean, not county, the Canton Township, then it will be inspected. So my, my issue is uh, it's, it's fairness, you know. <laughs> I mean, I, I, you know, I went and, and, and asked. I didn't, I mean, it, my, my thing is if, if I didn't come in and ask a question, I, I, I probably wouldn't have been in this situation right now. That is correct. And I believe this, Eric, is what we call a miscellaneous location. It's all over the township at any time. If someone calls us, we will go right out to that location. We may not be in your neighborhood looking at all of the other homes, uh, but if you call us and tell us about an issue, we will go out and look at it, and we, we yeah, will but assess how, how it. How does that ensure safety? If, if, what if some, nobody calls? But there's nobody so many. calls, we don't know about it. Eventually, we'll get to it as we go east to west and west to east. Back yeah, but then that will take some time, years. years. Oh, it it will. So I don't think that will, uh, you know, it's ensuring safety or the looks of the neighborhood. Well, when we repair sidewalks that are displaced or they have problems, that, that is improving the safety of the sidewalk. Right, but if you wait a, a while, I mean, the chances are that somebody is going to trip before you get to that place is very high. And, and that's why we like when people call. Well, but in my case, <laughs> I didn't call to complain. <laughs> I had a question. I don't think that was fair. But and I don't want to tell all my calls neighbors right and now. brings up an issue. We go and look. We can't. If someone calls with an issue, we can't say we're not going to look at it. It has come to our attention now. So, 
Well, but I, I hope you can see, I mean, it's just common sense. I don't think it's, it's, uh, it's fair. I, I don't, I, I'm not even sure that you can apply it as, as a law because if somebody complains and says, you know, the, this law or ordinance or, or you know, policy is only implemented on a few people at a time. It's not implemented on everybody all the time. You know, we, we implement in, in one zone where we look at everybody in a subdivision, and then as complaints come in through the year, right. we hit locations throughout the township. But sir, the, again, the, the time frame is, is uh, the time is the issue, right? If, if, you're, if your next zone on Hanford is in two years that you're going to look at, then for two years there's issues on the sidewalks and the aprons that you're not taking care of. Again, that's why we like when people call in. And we have many that do. you cannot do. depend on people to call in. What if nobody calls in? Well, I, Bill, we're not going Bill, to... Bill, if I may, yeah. we're not covering any new ground here. If you'd like to have further conversation with myself, legal counsel, you know, we can set yeah. something up offline. So please send me an email, and I'll set up a meeting, and we'll sit, we'll sit down face-to-face. -face okay. We're not covering any new ground right Can I have your... Uh, any way I can get contact? I've got a card for you. Okay. Is there any additional public comment? I'm now in the second row. Uh, third row, please, sir. Dykstra, 4543 Old Fieldstone. Wondering why uh, our taxes don't cover the sidewalk repairs since uh, they are public sidewalks, just like the roads. Well, property taxes don't cover roads either. Uh, roads are funded through the gas taxes, and the property taxes assessed in Canton, there's, no, there's nothing in there that covers a sidewalk or a road. Well, there is with the millage now, but, but general... Roads, specifically. Yeah, specific to roads uh, up as of this year. But only gas taxes uh, are used for road funding. Row. Fifth row, sir. Would you like to say anything regarding sidewalks? No, the kid. Uh, no, the young men have already spoken. Would you like to say anything? Okay, please now. Mm -hmm. Sanjay Dedia, I am a resident at eight three eight one Westchester Lane. Uh, I've been a Canton resident for almost uh, 17 years now. Uh, and this is just a comment, uh, nothing specific to the sidewalk program. I think it's a good thing. I think we are trying to uh, look for and increasing the safety of the residents uh, in the Canton Township. My general comment was, in general, a lot of our uh, uh, taxes and, uh, you know, the permits that, that, that we need to take out for all the work that's being done for the sidewalk program goes to Wayne County. However, a, lo a lot of the subdivisions, the, with the roads within the subdivisions are deteriorating and they're in pretty bad shape. However, nothing's being done. I, I know we, have, we, have, we had a recent increase in millage to you know, uh, improve the conditions of our Canton Township roads. But uh, at the same time, the roads within the subdivision are deteriorating pretty fast. And if we don't do anything about it soon enough, it'll be in pretty bad shape. So that was just, just a general comment I had to make. I highly recommend that you attend uh, Melissa's town hall at the summit Thursday, April 4th at 7 p.m. Additionally, on Canton Township's web website, 2019, there's already it's, uh, what, was it? what, what percentage are we dedicating to um, subdivision roads, inside neighborhoods? 55% to major, 30% uh, to the... We are dedicating over the next 20-year period 30% of that millage to go into neighborhood roads along with county uh, funding where they are looking for matches. And so uh, there's a, a ton of information on the township website specifically addressing neighborhood um, roads and I would strongly recommend do you have a homeowners association 
Yes, we yes we do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Process and do you know has their sub inquired? Westchester is a site condominium. All right, that's different. Okay, that's a private road inside your condominium that is belongs property. One, this one's uh, this was not a condominium. It's a Mayfair Village subdivision. Oh, oh, I thought you said Westchester West. Lane. Oh, Westchester. Mayfair, yes. Mayfair, yeah. Reach out to your HOA. All right. Okay. All right. Thank you. I'd like to speak. George, please. George Miller. I'd like to ask the engineer here, it's in engineering, yes, if there's a slump test taken so they're not cheating whoever's pouring the concrete, the company, or the concrete mix company. Test it can be taken, and if it's not poured, Right, they can catch it right from the get-go, whether they're doing a subdivision and say some company comes in there and does that particular subdivision, ready mix company. They can dilute the water in the, in the mix and it should pass the slump test. Now, let's go forward a little bit on right away for um, the county. I come to all the meetings here. As to my memory, and it's fairly good, I'd like to address the issue on Palmer Road, uh, just south, just east of Sheldon Estates is being built. I believe the county sometime, uh, not the county, but the township, there must be a quarter mile in between that subdivision that's going up now and Cherry Hill on the east side that they put a sidewalk in. This township paid for it. And that's on county right-of-way property. I like to know what we're doing, paying for that sort of thing. Some of these people have an issue on county. I understand if it's in front of your house even, that's county property. Am I correct? That's a county right-of-way from the, your sidewalk to the curb. Yes, sir. They're supposed to be responsible for that, really. If you get down to brass tacks, even mowing the lawn, most likely. So that's another issue. Another issue out here with these subdivisions that's going up, I'd like to know how the county, evidently, on some of the older subdivisions, 70s, 80s, 90s, and even some of the new ones, Sheldon Estates, I noticed, that's concrete. They put a portable batch plant in there and, and hauled concrete in, one or the other. I'd like to know why some of these new subdivisions in the western part of the township have asphalt, which is a cheaper way. I've known guys on Sheldon and Palmer Road that was doing a subdivision there. The county said he wanted to put in asphalt roads. No way, they wouldn't allow it. But, and he was going to put asphalt and he couldn't afford it. So he sold off the property, 10 or 20 acres there to a developer. Now I'd like to know how some of these, some of these builders are getting by with putting asphalt streets in on $200,000 homes or plus. Not condominiums, subdivisions. Uh, and another thing is I'm particularly interested in the slump test. I'd like to ask the engineer, and I've been around it for hundreds of yards of this stuff through the years. You can't keep concrete from cracking. Even if you put rebar in it, it can't be done. Thank you, George. Um Hey, could you just address the slump test portion of it and the rest of it uh, we'll, we'll set aside for another time? With, with the roads? We uh, will no, have with, the, with the sidewalk uh, program, slump testing. With the sidewalk, we occasionally do testing and we uh, get the mixed design from our contractor and we are confident that he is using a good concrete and we do actually periodically test during the season, during the construction season. Is the slump test something that we perform? Or we do a break test. test. I think we've break done test. slumps in the past. Yeah, we have our inspectors out. Thank you. All right. I think that concludes. Is there any additional public comment regarding? Okay, yes, sir, please, as we move across the back row. So, 
Uh, my name is Chaitanya Kulkarni. I'm uh, living at 43589 Fredericksburg Street. Uh, our neighborhood has got a letter that's uh, saying uh, the sidewalk program for 2019 has been scaled down. So our, com our neighborhood is basically pushed out to 2020. Uh, and we have been recommended to do temporary patching uh, for the issues that we have right now or to fix the or do the repairs in a year. Uh, I have a request, uh, can, I, can we get the quality standards that are needed for the repairs and also uh, basically I see the marks on the uh, sidewalk, but there are confusion between what I need to take care of and what my neighbor needs to take care of because it's kind of on the boundary line. So if you can send out exact details of what needs to be repaired and what the standards are, uh, even if it's next year, that would be preferred. Sure, I, and I would recommend if you wanted to contact Erica in the lobby afterwards, we can get your contact information and provide that. Yep. Thank you. Uh, moving across the back row, sir, would you like to make a comment? Questions, ma'am? Sir? Okay. I think that concludes our uh, public comment. Uh, now we'll move to, uh, what are we going to do here, clerk, Seabrest? Do we close public hearing? Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board close the public hearing um, uh, for the comments on the necessity of sidewalk repairs to the township sidewalk ordinance, uh, sidewalk repair program policy, and as provided in Public Act 80 of the Public Acts of 1989. Support. Favor of the motion is present. Please state aye. 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 Motion carries, and we have a third motion. Supervisor, I move to adopt the attached resolution requiring replacement of sidewalks in by Parkview Estates number one, by Parkview Estates number two, Forest Brook number one, Forest Brook number two, Poplar Ridge, and miscellaneous locations as indicated on the attached list and published in the Canton Eagle on March 7, 2019 and March 21st, 2019. Those in favor of the third motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 Motion carries. I didn't vote in. Okay, I'm sorry. Sorry, were we not going to have discussion? Uh, we could certainly have discussion. Is there any discussion from the board? I, we kind of skipped by you guys here. To this. We've been no through respect. this a few times. So, Anne Marie, go ahead. I just want to ask one question. So, the green belt area, when you have a, you said a sidewalk when it go, ramp, when it goes into a green belt area, we've discontinued those. We've pulled those out. So, over the years, there have been small sections of sidewalk placed between the curb and the running sidewalk, uh, mostly subdivisions from the 70s, 80s, and into the 90s. Many times, there is no receiving ramp on the opposite side, and so we actually remove those. We call them uh, ramp to nowhere. So we've consistently removed those for, for many years. Does our program also look at when we repair some of the ramps, if lines are needed, crossing lines are needed, do we alert Wayne County or, I mean, I know some of our crossing lines are faded at some of those ramps. And yeah, and many, many subdivisions don't have a crossing or a marking. Uh, probably a better question for the county. We don't have a standard on, on redoing those or replacing them. Uh, Notice they've been pulling out, in my neighborhood, which was from the 70s, they pulled out some of the ramps that went into the road, and I, the school bus kids would use those. And now they kind of have to walk with the big snow that we had out into the street to get onto the bus now. Yeah, and there were, the school district actually utilized those small slabs to nowhere as a stop. And we're actually trying to work with the school district to change some of their bus routes. Uh, we actually met with one large subdivision about that about a month ago. Okay, so you would make sure that some of the stops were where those sidewalks still were, right? So we can well, typically the bus stops are at the corners or at the intersections. Some of those unique mid-block slabs to nowhere were assigned years ago as a bus stop because it, was a, it wasn't really an intersection. They just put them there. So we have run into... Uh, in one subdivision in particular, an area where we removed those. And so we're trying to work with the school district to redo their uh, busing district. Okay, so if residents see that, like in my neighborhood where now there's no sidewalk, we should contact the school district or? Uh, 
residents contact you? Well, the, the only subdivision where we've actually had that, that complaint or issue come up was Brookside. And uh, we met with their board about a month ago, and we're trying to work with the school district to move those bus stops to the intersections. Stone Gate it happened also. So Stone Gate, yes, yep. yes. Okay. All right, so if residents call, we would just refer them. You can refer them to us, yes. Okay. All right, thanks. A certain way now yeah. Right. Um, I just wanted to speak on this because essentially what we're deciding is is it appropriate for uh, the township to have this program this year and that's what we've been discussing tonight and I do want to speak obviously in favor of us having this program this year additionally um, the same law that requires us to have a public hearing on this program tonight also has provisions if the population of Canton Township were interested, we could assess an additional one mil property tax for uh, the construction of um, sidewalks and pathways, and we could probably get all the work done in a year if we wanted to do that. Um, we did just pass a local roads millage last year for 1.45 mils, so I do feel for me personally that um, the township taking care of the damaged slates that are in the county right of ways or that are in basically government property and the individual property owner taking care of the sidewalk in front of their own home is probably the most direct and equitable way to do it and as somebody whose subdivision was tagged last year uh, I can appreciate the uh, cost associated with the program it's unfortunate uh, but it is cheaper than a lawsuit that's for sure so I am in favor of the program so briefly what does a slab cost to repair or a square or a block whatever you call it we're at about $5.25 a uh, square foot on four inch. So a five by five slab is gonna end up being about 250 bucks. 200, 200, 200, 200, 200 bucks. 250, 300, depending on how you measure. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Go ahead, Stephen. Um, have we made any progress or even tried to um, do- I, I'm sorry, John, oh. <laughs> about 150. Wrong math. Um, I could see the wheels going um, on creating some kind of reporting app for people to report issues. Like a sidewalk issue? Yeah, I mean, we have GPS in everybody's phone, so it would be interesting. I mean, I'm out there biking most days above 50 degrees, and I could easily re push a button on my phone. Say. Don't, we don't have an app. We, we do get emails, phone, uh, some okay. written correspondence. I'd be interested to see yeah. if other communities have done that. And the other thing is, um, I was just wondering around us, the other communities, is 10 years typical? Or do you know if some do less? As far as a cycle? A cycle, cycle, yeah. I, Steve, I really don't know okay. uh, how other communities cycle through. Just wondering if there's like a benefit to doing it le in like eight years or five years or something that would keep the sidewalks from deteriorating more that we'd actually save money by doing it more often somehow. The first years we went through over 15. Yeah, and now uh, we're down to Actually 10. moving down to a 10 year cycle is, is becoming challenging because it's, it's a large community. Okay, thank you. Wendy, you wanted to add something? Yes, our new, um IT manager that recently started is actually looking into some programs that allow residents to literally do what you're talking about, yeah. take a picture at a site and be able to upload it and say, here's exactly where it, the, um, That'd be great. where it takes place. I think the city of Detroit uses a program like that. City of Ann Arbor uses a program. Yeah. So she's, so she's currently looking into that to be able to launch something like that. It would take a little bit of time to implement it, but, yeah, we, of are, course. but we are looking into that cool. for the future. Thank you. You're welcome. Add that to Thursday's agenda. Okay. Great program. All right, so we had a motion on the uh, floor. It was seconded. Um, those in favor of the motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, now we move into the consent calendar, which I, we will ask for secrets to read as a single motion. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board approve the consent calendar as presented with item C1, reappointments to the Historic District Commission of Dave Curtis and Ralph Welton, and item C2, appointment to the Commission for Culture, Arts, and Heritage, or CLS, of, I believe, Nick Brandon of the Plymouth Canton Community Schools. Court. 
favor of the consent calendar as presented, say aye. 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 Carries. Uh, now we're moving into the general, cal uh, general calendar. Uh, G1, consider first reading of an amendment to Appendix A, Zoning Code of Ordinances for Oakwood Healthcare Fillmore Place Rezoning. This will be in the form of two motions. Mr. Supervisor, I move to introduce and hold the first reading of the proposed amendment to Appendix A, Zoning of the Code of Ordinances of the Charter Township of Canton as provided in the attached ordinance which rezones the subject parcel listed from LIR, or Light Industrial Research, to R6, Single Family Attached Residential District. Support. The request is consistent with the surrounding zoning to the north and the east. The request is also consistent with the medium high density residential future land use designation on the future land use map of the comprehensive plan. The future land, land use map also requires development of this parcel be done through the use of a planned development, PDD, so we can evaluate the impacts and transitions between the industrial area on Michigan Avenue and Chatterton condominiums on Gettys Road. And I believe we have representatives here this evening uh, that could address any of the uh, board's questions. And then also, uh, Attorney Kristen Kolb has stayed late with us to, you know, if we go down the, the legal alley, uh, Kristen's here to support, so. Does anybody have any questions? The Planning Commission, I think, has reviewed this. And Marie, and right, and we just as you could, they don't have the map up, but in the map in the packet, you can see it's surrounded by R six, R six. So, we, you know, went ahead with. The, we didn't have any issues because of that. But then, even in the Planning Commission, the big thing we asked about was traffic. But they'll be doing that traffic analysis when the PDD is submitted. So, we did discuss a little bit. They are trying to market more to the senior type living. Or Stephen, I was just wondering, I thought we did this already. I'm sorry. Was it part of just the master plan that we did this? Yes. Or? Okay. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to speak on that. I remember this came up during the master plan, and part of the legal foundation or rationale for this change will be the fact that it is consistent with the master plan. I had some concerns about us um, updating the master plan by. Um, uh, changing that and um, we did not approve in the process that it was that the uh, master plan would require a board approval it was board agreement so the next time we come forward for a master plan um, I believe it's every five years so in the next four or three years I, I would hope or I, that the board at least thinks about that when we bring forward um, the request for the master plan that we make it conditional upon board approval and not board agreement that's just a constant talk to my fellow colleagues here I had one more question um, I can't remember do we have a light down there now at back in Michigan Avenue or I don't or I know it was in plan yeah that has been designed and it will be installed this year this year yeah okay perfect thank you Shendo Holmes is the developer It will not be. No, they're just the management company now. Oh. The reason I ask it that Crescendo had built my home here in nineteen seventies. I don't know if it was the same company. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. The, yeah. the salesman still still around? Phil? No, Phil's, Phil's long gone. Meal. Phil could sell ice to Eskimos, I'll <laughs> tell you. He was the thing. Told one to me. Yeah. yeah. Well. Good to have you back. Board questions. Uh, those in favor of the first motion is present. Please say aye. 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 Motion carries. We have a second. Supervisor, I move to table for consideration of the amendment for a second reading on April 9th, 2019. Second. There's a second motion to present. Please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you, guys. Uh, uh, moving on, item G2 consider preliminary approval of Park Creek Plan Development District. Mr. Supervisor, I move that the board adopt the following resolution uh, for a preliminary approval of a plan development for Park Creek. Whereas the project sponsor has requested preliminary approval of a plan development for Park Creek located on the northwest corner of Beck and Gettys Road, and whereas the Planning Commission reviewed the preliminary development plan and draft development agreement, made a recommendation to approve the request as it meets the criteria for a plan development, fulfills identified needs in the community, and results in definite benefits to the community now therefore be it resolved the board of trustees of the charter township of canton michigan does hereby approve the request for a preliminary plan development 
for the Park Creek proposed on the tax parcels listed as shown on the concept plan and commitments outlined in the draft plan development agreement subject to any and all applicable state and local development regulations. Good. Okay. The applicant proposes uh, to locate 75 site condos and 91 detached condos of a total of 166 residential units on approximately 89 acres located in the northwest corner of Beck and Gettys. This property was previously part of Sharon Cross Plan Development District that has since expired. Road connections will be made to Sharon Cross as well as Gettys and Beck Road. Each plan development district is required to demonstrate definite benefit to the community. The project sponsor proposes to maintain a 9.3 acre private park at the northwest corner of Beck and Gettys and 38.10 acres of general common open space for a total of 57% open space throughout the project. A uh, sidewalk will be installed along Gettys and along Beck Road to connect with the sidewalk, the entry to Sharing Cross condominiums, including a pedestrian bridge crossing at Fowler Creek on Beck Road. And at one point, we had talked about uh, them giving property to the township and the township putting a park on it. In the end, we wound up with, with this, which I think is in the best interest of, of all. We'll still have a nice green corner there without the added expense of maintaining it for decades to come. So um, do we have representatives with us this evening? Very good. Are there any board questions or comments? Yeah, Marie. Just at the Planning Commission meeting, it was an interesting swap because that's where we, this is the one we had kind of sent back to the drawing board, the Planning Commission. So we had heard them initially, and that was a very long meeting actually, and we sent them back with a lot of changes and questions. And like you said with the park pad, they basically made it from a public park to a private park, and that was because of the lack of um, parking spaces and also the cost of, to maintain it. There's also going to be a pedestrian bridge um, over over the road, but one of the ma major things that happened was Don Zuber, who was our resident architect on the planning commission, did sit with them and help them with some of the layouts of the home. And so she really did a good job, and they all worked together, and they brought that to the planning commission, and that's what finally passed. So it, it is a big change from where they started. But I think everybody will like, I, don't we? I work behind the scenes getting us to the point. Yes, it was. Do we have any pictures of? I don't know. Yeah, they don't have any in the packet for everyone to see. This is fine. Flipped also. You, you made some of the. Okay. Yeah, yeah I'm surprised. Yeah, okay. Just on uh, Steve, the housing go ahead. product. Steve had a question. Oh, I, I think I think Anne Marie was alluding to that. I remember there was some discussion of flipping the types of homes. From what? Can you explain that just briefly? Sure. Um, originally, well, this um, this site plan, we've got two different types of housing product. The first is a typical single family, two story, colonial type product, and the second is what we call an active adult, a more ranch condo type product that we, it's an age targeted um, ranch product. So originally, we had the ranches over on the west side of the site, backing up to Central Park um, South there. And the Planning Commission's request of us in the January meeting was to flip-flop it and put the single family <coughs> backing up to single family and then move the active adult, the ranch product, over to the east towards Back Road, um, which is what you're seeing tonight. And um, I think probably a better plan. So we've got the single family over on the west side next to Central Park, and also it ties into Charing Cross to the north. We're making that connection so that they will have a... Uh, a secondary point of access. So when you drive through our single family portion of the site, you'll then get to, you'll get up to Charing Cross, which is a similar, similar type of housing. Great. Um, the other thing I was gonna comment on that I really like is the intersection improvements. Um, so you are going to widen the intersection to allow for a turn signal eventually? Is that yeah, right? well, so what happened, we had to do a uh, traffic study as part of our uh, due diligence and part of your requirements. And it was found that at the intersection of Gettys and Beck, 
Um, there's actually a deficiency right now for all, all left turns at all directions. Um, and their, their left turns are allowed. You have the lanes there, but the, the issue is, is that the signal doesn't have, a, have lights that allow for left turns. So you basically are just waiting to turn for an opening. So we are going to add, we've talked with Wayne County, obviously this is Wayne County Roads, and we're going to add the four extra signal lights on, those, on that intersection, the mast arms that are there, oh, okay. so that you will be able to turn left from every direction with an actual light. Um, as yeah. far as the wide road widening, we, we will be having to do um, widenings for both our entrances because uh, we have an entrance off Beck and Gettys, and we'll be doing widenings for those entrances as well. Yeah, that intersection backs up already. Yeah, so. I think if, if it's already backing up, we're only going to add to it. So right. I think this is a good, a, a good improvement. Great, thank you. Sidewalks will be added also, and we have a lot of empty space, which is good too. So sidewalks all around this. Sidewalks all along the road frontage, back road, we're going to do a pedestrian bridge across the creek, so that will complete all the way down to the intersection. Um, Gettys Road, we have the majority of the sidewalk. We just, you can probably see, we've got the one little par out parcel. We are pursuing an easement there, so we're hoping to get, it's just, it's one, one parcel, so we're hoping to get the sidewalk in its entirety built. That would be great. Thank you so much. And then there's sidewalks on both sides of the road within the development as well. I don't have a question. I just want to say that this is an, an excellent proposal. I, I love uh, the PDD process we use here. I think it, it allows us to keep a lot of these trees. That was some great green space. That, uh, say, nine-acre <coughs> nine acre park. That's, yeah, over nine-acre. A pedestrian uh, bridge over uh, one of the county drains, over that creek, is, is huge as well for tying into the board goals to have a livable, livable walkable community. So this is great. Uh, the uh, price range for the condos and the houses, roughly, do you We'd know? We'd be looking at l low threes. Um, we, we may get into, with the smaller single family, we may get into the high twos, but we'd be looking to transact in, in low threes, maybe into the mid threes with a larger house. All right, seeing no further board questions, uh, those in favor of the motion is present, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. On item G3, uh, consider approval of annual maintenance and technical support agreement for CityWorks asset management software. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve payment of the annual software maintenance and technical support agreement for CityWorks from Azteca Systems Incorporated at 11075 South State Suite, Street, Suite 24, uh, Sandy, Utah. 84070 and approve a purchase order uh, for a not to exceed amount of $40,000. Okay, Public Works is requesting approval of the annual maintenance and technical support for CityWorks software application as stated. Uh, this is the GIS software package which is critical <coughs> operation of the township. Any board questions, comments? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion is present, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G4. Consider award purchase order contract to Core and Main for 7,380 feet of Type K copper tubing, brass fittings, and stop box and rod. Mr. Supervisor, I move to award a purchase order contract for the purchase of 7,380 feet of Type K copper tubing and brass fitting to Core in Maine for an amount not to exceed $103,316.30. Support. This is our annual copper buy. Uh, you've seen this now three times before. It's that time of the year. In order to, for public works to go out and do what they need to do with the water lines, they need the copper. So are there any board questions? Seeing none. Those in favor of the motion is presented. Please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G5. Consider award of contract to Hutch Paving for the major road, major asphalt projects for the 2019 Road Improvement Program and authorize a budget amendment. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve a purchase order and contract with Hutch Paving Incorporated for the 2019 major road asphalt projects construction in the amount of $1,080,800 plus a 10% contingency of $101,080 
for a total of one million one hundred eighty-eight thousand eight hundred and eighty dollars. Second. Hutch Paving was the low bidder, as stated. Um, our engineer, Northwest Consultants Inc., evaluated the bids and recommended to award to Hutch Paving. Uh, but uh, Bill's here to answer any questions that the board may have. Go ahead, Summer. Um, my question is: um, Have we? inspected their previous work? Have we talked to people that they've worked with in the past? Yes. Uh, Hutch Paving did several projects for us. They did the reconstruction of the Summit uh, West parking lot last year. And the previous year to that, they did the admin building out front here. We've worked with Hutch several times uh, on, on township projects. I don't know if they've done county road projects in Canton Township? I don't believe they've done any county road projects in Canton, no. But they do that type of work. Didn't do Canton Center Road, right? No. Um, if I may. Yeah, please. I, um, what guarantees do we have as to um, the work they do? I know a lot of people get concerned about um, road work in general. You hear... Uh, people talk about warranties a lot, right? And I know we've discussed that ad nauseum or here uh, at great length. We've talked about uh, warranties sometimes costing a third of the cost of the actual work itself, and so that that might not always be the best avenue for indemnifying yourself from having bad work done. Um, but what other assurances do we have for so these contracts? On these types of projects where we're removing portions of road and then rebuilding them, it's unlikely we would be able to obtain a warranty. Uh, when we do full depth replacement, there is a possibility to get a warranty. We have not asked for that in these cases. Uh, we have a number of guarantees in the contract to ensure the work is done. Uh, we require a performance bond and also a labor and materials payment bond that allows us to access a surety if they do not pay their subcontractors or if they fail to perform the work we can use the performance bond to call on their insurance company to complete the work. Uh, so those are the guarantees that Hutch will finish this job. As far as a warranty on the work, we will have our engineers out inspecting and testing this material as it goes in, which in my humble opinion is better than a warranty. As if you catch the material and the uh, uh, watch the process as they put it in. Uh, I find that to be more useful. Bonds that you were talking about, I don't see any of that in the in the in the uh, the RBA, or and I didn't see it in the bid. No, the the Where spec book that? is actually about an inch and a half thick, uh, with a series of drawings, and uh, I'd be glad to go over the details of our contracts at some point. Which roads actually are going to be the subject of this. Uh, for Hutch. Hutch, so Hutch will be working on the asphalt road, and it is the back of the web. So Hutch is going to be doing some work near Beck and Cherry Hill. They're also going to be doing a large uh, capping program on Lily Road South. That's probably the largest one. And they are also doing work on uh, sections of Morton Taylor. Uh, north of Warren, south of Joy. So those are the major asphalt projects. They will also be fixing that bump. I was going to ask about that. Road. Yeah. I, I hit that today. At it. <laughs> the old bump. So those are the primary projects for Hodge. That's good to know. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Is there, go ahead, Emery. So do we put any incentives in our contracts like the state does? So if you finish before this, you get a bonus, or if you take too long, you get penalized? No, we have, we have, a, we have penalties if you take too long. We set a, a substantial completion date, and then we have what are called liquidated damages, uh, which are, can be used against a contractor. Uh, we generally try not to do that because we want them to come back and bid. But I think the best thing is watching them and making sure they're on schedule as they move through the, through the construction season. Uh, in the future, we may consider incentives. I, I haven't thought a lot about it, but it, it is a possibility. How 96 got done quickly. Yeah, okay. yes. When they, did, when they did the 275 reconstruction, there was a, a big uh, incentive. 
We also specify the materials. We do. Okay. All right. Thanks. Do you know? Do we have anything in there that requires them to have, like, if they have an apprenticeship, if they do apprenticeships, do they do they have an apprenticeship program that they participate in, like my OSHA safety trainings? Do we? have any guarantee that, that they are doing that kind of stuff with uh, their Since company? this is township funded, there's no requirements for all the Davis-Bacon or the, uh, uh, all the, the prevailing wage uh, rules don't apply. Okay. Those are for federal and state jobs. Since this is locally funded, we don't, we don't have any of those requirements. Don't want to have any of those requirements? I, I don't see the need to move to those more restrictive types of terms. They add costs, but we're also using tax dollars to build public roads. Uh, so, and, and there's right. a perception out there in the public that roads aren't constructed in the most um, effective or quality, I mean, whether it's real or, or otherwise. Yeah, we, no, we're not, we're, we don't have any provisions in there related to uh, okay. union contracts or Davis-Bacon and, and these, these companies that are being awarded, they do that type of work, but in this case, yeah. those are not terms of our contract. I saw all the bids kind of came in close, so yeah. that was good, right? Which is good. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. Hi. Summer? Just a quick question on timing. When do you expect the construction to start? Uh, I expect them to be out end of April, early May. Plants typically open in mid-April. Mid had people asking me, I paid my money, now when are you going to fix my roads? Oh. <laughs> no further board questions. Those in favor of the motion is present. Please say aye. 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 Item G6, uh, similar but different. Uh, consider award contract to Great Lakes Contracting Solutions LLC for major road, major concrete projects for the 2019 Road Improvement Program and authorized budget amendment. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve a purchase order and contract with Great Lakes Contracting Solutions, LLC, for the 2019 Major Road, Major Concrete Projects construction in the amount of $660,607.47, plus a 10% contingency of $66,060.74, for a total of seven hundred twenty-six thousand six hundred sixty-eight dollars and twenty-one cents. Support. Very good. The last one we talked about was for the asphalt streets. This is these are for the concrete streets. Uh, Great Lakes Contracting Solutions was the low bidder, and NCI also reviewed and evaluated the bed the bids and recommended an award go to Great Lakes. Are there any additional board comments, or they fall in probably pretty much the same line of? Questioning we just had for Bill on Ashbolt. Just out of curiosity, uh, are we buying any coal patch to put fill uh, potholes with by, with this money or what? No, we're not. Okay, that's still a county responsibility, and 100% of this money is going to be for long-term road repair as opposed to short-term road maintenance. That's correct. These All are right. projects. Yep. Is is the concrete then the dotted lines? So uh, there's uh, the major concrete award that, that you're looking at right now in general are the north-south roads. So there's two large reconstructions on uh, Lots Road and uh, let me see, there is a section of Canton Center south of Cherry Hill and I apologize because that is not the color map. No. Uh, so in general the major concrete are the north-south uh, concrete roads. May I ask a question that's sort of related? Uh, so the two sections of Morton Taylor looks like we're going to be doing some. I assume that's asphalt work based on. Yes, it will be repairs to the base concrete and then building up of asphalt. These are the these are the sections that the county was unable to complete over the past several years. Yeah. Now I've noticed that there's already some wear and tear showing up on the county portion that's in between these two. Uh, yes. Would there has there been any discussion at all that while we're out there doing anything for like. Um, a ceiling or anything like that? I don't, I don't know anything about engineering. No, but it, it will be a location we will crack seal next year. It, our portion and we'll probably do the entire section of Morton Taylor. No further questions at this time. Those in favor of the G7 motion as presented, say aye. 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 Uh, G8. Oh, that was G6. No, that was G7. 
G7 is minor concrete. G7. There's two Great Lakes. One. Great Lakes. Two Great Lakes. Top down early. There you go. Okay. Consider award a contract with Great Lakes Contracting Solutions LLC for major road minor concrete projects for 2019 road improvement program and authorize a budget amendment. And I need to go back and read G6 because that doesn't make sense to me, guys. And to be fair, I didn't do the budget amendment for G6, so while we're up there, we might as well do a budget amendment. Shame on me. Um, so there was a second motion for budget amendment. <laughs> Let's go back and we're going to finish up G6 before we dive into G7 because they are very similar. So, Michael, when you're ready for the budget. Uh... Yes, sir. Mr. Supervisor, I moved uh, to approve the following budget amendment an increase expenditure to the roads and major for ca the capital outlay fund uh, for $726,600 and $69, and a decrease expenditure uh, to uh, major roads, professional services engineering account in the amount of $726,669. Support. Okay, so in favor of the second motion related to G6 to close that out, please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Sorry. Now we're gonna move down into the meat of the stuff. Mr. Supervisor, I'm, well, I'm, I move to approve a uh, purchase order and contract with Great Lakes Contracting Solutions LLC for the 2019 major road minor concrete projects construction in the amount of $883,040.65 plus a 10% contingency of $88,304.06 for a total of $971,344.71. Contracting Solutions, LLC, was the low bidder. Our engineer, NCI, also has evaluated and recommends the board to Great Lakes for the minor concrete projects for 2019 road improvement program. Are there any additional questions related to the minor? Mike off. Um, Are there any additional questions related to the minor? None. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please say aye. 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 Motion carries. Now the motion is Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve uh, the following budget amendment. Increase expenditures to the capital outlay account for uh, major roads in the amount of uh, $971,345 and a decrease expenditure to the professional services engineering account for $971,345. Those in favor of the second motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 Motion carries. Item G8. Consider. Oh, go ahead. May I take a moment of privilege and revisit item G5 and take care of that budget amendment that was missed as well? Please do. Somewhere our finance director is probably shooting daggers at me. I apologize, Wendy. Yeah. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve the following budget amendment. Um, Increase expenditure to the capital outlay account for major roads in the amount of $1,188,880 and a decrease expenditure to the professional services engineering account in the amount of $1,188,880. Those in favor of the second motion related to G5 to allow us to clean up the accounts, please state aye now. Aye. 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 <laughs> motion carries. Now jumping down to G8, consider authorizing the purchase of property for development of a northwest, or I'm sorry, northeast neighborhood park. And this will be in the form of two motions. Mr. Supervisor, I move to authorize yourself, the Township Supervisor, to sign any documents necessary to complete the sale of an approximate one acre, uh, one quarter acre parcel along Copernick Road east of I-275 for a cost of $25,000 with the land to be developed into a neighborhood park. And in summary, on November 14, 2017, the board approved the sale of 2.44 acres of vacant land in the amount of $183,000. The board approval also specified that the net proceeds from the sale will be dedicated for park funds. 
An example may be a, mark, a pocket park at a location on the east side uh, that Supervisor Williams has asked Leisure Services to consider. Real estate agreement identified in attachment A was developed between Canton's legal counsel and Northgate <coughs> apartment complex developer, TKB LLC, for Canton's purchase of the future park parcel located on the north side of Copernic, east of I-275, uh, for the price as stated. Um, I know Leisure Services has been doing quite a bit of legwork behind the scenes in preparation to get us to this point, and you have some plans with the public uh, to bring them into this process, correct? Yes, once we finalize the purchase, the next step will be the property, to finalize the property split um, with our second floor building department um, and then from there we will we have we've begun working with an architect on um, several a variety of different options for park design and then from there we'll schedule public meetings to get the public's input and really focus on getting the individuals that are up in the northeast portion of the uh, township to show up at the meetings and make them accessible to them so that they can provide us input on what they do and don't like about the different options so we can come up with the best consensus for a park that will meet as many needs as possible. What we're referring to is the uh, Holiday Park subdivision, when, which was the first subdivision to come to Canton Township. When that subdivision was built, the concept of having neighborhood parks didn't even exist back then. So now we're up, we've got an opportunity here to to catch up and, and, and give these guys a neighborhood park that they, they can enjoy. Right. And what will this do? I know at one point you had showed us a map of all the park deserts, if you will, or the areas of Canton Township that were not covered by a park with us would close one of those areas? Yes, absolutely. The, the northeast section is definitely a, a gap that we have right now. That there make it, it within 10 minute walking? For, for the neighborhood, absolutely. I see no other questions or comments. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please say aye. 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 Motion carries, second motion. Supervisor, I move, uh, I further move to approve the following budget amendment, an increased revenue to the fund balance appropriation of $25,000 and an increased expense to capital outlay land account in the amount of $25,000. In favor of the second motion as presented, please say aye. 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 Motion carries, item G9, consider approving a 2019 blanket purchase order on behalf of the Public Safety Department. Fire Department, more specifically. G9. Mr. Supervisor, I move to approve a 2019 blanket purchase order in the amount of $40,000 issued to Douglas Safety Systems LLC at 2566 North Mer Mer Meridian Road, Suite 6 in Sanford, Michigan. Four eight six five seven. Okay. And what we're doing here with this this motion is RBA is uh, Douglas Safety Systems LLC is a supplier uh, for the fire department. They were <coughs> not included on the original uh, master list for blanket purchase orders. So now we're we're catching up. So the the board action matches uh, the the purchasing activity. Are there any questions for Josh? A little paperwork cleanup, no questions. Those in favor of the motion as presented, please state aye. Aye. There is item G10. Consider waiving the bidding process and approve the purchase and training of two German Shepherd puppies. Mr. Supervisor, I move to waive the bidding process and approve the purchase and training of two German Shepherds in a total amount of $24,200 from K-9 Academy Training Facility. Support. The police department is requesting to purchase two German Shepherds for its K-9 unit, replacing K-9 Thor and retiring K-9 Haas. The department is also requesting to waive the bidding process due to the uniqueness of police K-9 and their training methods and utilize K-9 Academy training facility at a proposed total amount of 24,200 as stated. This includes the purchase, supplies, and one-year training for two K-9 and their handlers. Does anybody have any questions for Director Meyer? Does it include the cost of the dogs? They're, the dogs themselves are included in that price? Yes, sir. 
Real oh, quick, can you go over why we have to replace uh, the, our canines? Yeah, so it's uh, really kind of twofold, really. Um, canine Thor passed away unexpectedly this year. Um, so that's one replacement dog. And Canine Haas is being retired due to his age. Um, the current dog that we have in service, we have three canine uh, officers. Uh, the third dog, uh, Canine Hank, was reassigned to uh, Officer Robinson, who's assigned to the DEA. Uh, for that, that was done because that dog is currently trained on, uh, for narcotics, is trained to detect marijuana. Uh, with the law passage, it makes it very difficult for us to keep those dogs in service in a patrol function. Uh, but because that officer is assigned to the federal agency, um, it made logical sense to do that versus retiring a dog that was only in service for a year. Uh, so these dogs will be multi-purpose dogs. They'll be trained uh, for article detection, uh, tracking purposes, and also narcotic detection, excluding marijuana. No further questions. I have uh, two oh, additional questions one um can you take three other dogs and two <laughs> can, can you keep them i don't need them back yes and okay. yes thank you <laughs> but not for twenty four thousand dollars no. <laughs> <laughs> all right those in favor of the motion is presented please say aye aye aye, aye. Motion carries that was a single motion correct all right uh final item on the agenda official agenda here g11 Consider the waive, waiving the bidding process and purchase priority dispatch software. All right, Mr. Supervisor, I move to waive the bidding process and approve the purchase of ProQA or ProQA emergency medical fire dispatch software in the amount of one hundred and fifteen thousand nine hundred ninety-five dollars from Priority Dispatch at one one zero Regent Street, Suite five hundred, Salt Lake City, Utah four eight one. Eight four one one one. Okay. Um, as already stated, in addition to that, uh, the amount specified includes all the components necessary, including software, server support, and training. Proca is the only EMD EFD software offered that integrates with Clemis, the system that we currently use with Michigan State Police. Is that? Clemens is federal state. Uh, Clemens is uh, through Oakland County. Priority to priority dispatch. Are there any questions for Director Meyer for the software upgrade package? Seeing none, those in favor of the motion is presented. Please state aye. 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 Motion carries. All right, that concludes our formal agenda. Is there any public comments? Yes, please. I'd ask that you go to the uh, podium. Yep, and then uh, your name and address. Uh, I guess it's a good distance. Um, hi, I'm Will McGovern. I live at 1257 Surrey Heights. I'm actually here for a school project. Um, each, I guess, term or semester, we have to go and witness uh, local politics in America, obviously. Um, I go to Milford High School. I live around here, so I thought I'd come to somewhere I kind of live close to for political meeting. Usually I go out to Milford or Highland, Oakland County area politics. I gotta say, this is a lot nicer because those are smaller, <laughs> those are smaller towns where like, you know, I'm not gonna say anything, but they, uh, they drive tractors to school out there. So yeah, it's really nice. I have to say, uh, I really like the uh, skateboard presentation. I know it's my school especially. I see a lot of my classmates kind of like shying away from the traditional hockey, football, basketball, um, baseball kind of sports. I see a lot more of skiing. We had a really good ski season, a lot of good snowboarding season. And I see a lot of kids picking up uh, sports that aren't as common as like lacrosse or rugby. So I thought that was really good. Um, I had a question for a lot of you. Um, I'm not for sure with a lot of this stuff. I want to be a future politician myself, but I was wondering, are you guys elected, volunteer, appointed? How do you guys get I'll on the council? All, all elected. You're all elected? Okay, okay. That was a good question. And uh, you are in the middle, you are the like the, supervisor. the supervisor. I was gonna say, everybody tell you, you kind of look like Martin Sheen, you know what I'm talking about? Oh, like, the guy don't go there. Now. He was in West Wing, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, down, I thought that was pretty good. Um, 
I noticed uh, most of what you guys talked about was roads and sidewalk repairs. What else do you guys do on a daily basis or I guess, you know, each meeting? What is, uh, uh, I guess, the wide variety of topics you talk about? What is the main thing you guys talk about? Um, public comment is meant just for that and it's not really a question and answer thing, but the, you're the last guy tonight, so we can, I can, the, does someone want to address and then we'll kind of wrap up and then if you have more questions, what we can do is just talk to you offline okay. and answer yeah. your specific questions. But does any, Diane, somebody, because Diane served yeah. in the state House of Representatives prior to. Yeah, uh, you, what does he want to Just in know general. What we're doing? Or yeah, what were you guys like? Okay. So you, tonight you talked about like fixing the roads and all that. What else do you guys do other than just, you know, talk about the roads and all that? Like what else? Probably talk offline, but I'm the treasurer, so I collect the water oh, okay. and taxes. Um, and Michael is the clerk, and he. Yeah, we I run the elections and uh, talk okay. about uh, it's primarily the function of the of the clerk's office. We also approve development, right? We approved a number of developments uh, tonight. Uh, when people want to go through the zoning ordinance, which regulates where things can be built, what types of of, of structures can be built, um, we spend money, right? The tax dollars here. Uh, there was a, some debate about whether or not residents should spend those that money fixing their sidewalk, or whether every resident should pay, pay through their taxes. Uh, so, yeah, we do a lot of that. We buy equipment for the police department, the fire department, and uh, a park, right? We established a park today, so it's big stuff. We have combined all in budgets, if you conclude water, sewer, public safety, general fund, probably about $140 million a year. Education would be included. Or, no, education you know, is no, not education part is of different. That's, There's a whole other board separate. for that. Um, but about $140 million rough all in budget. And then it's just Canton's no, budget, no, $140 million. No, Nothing gets spent without all seven giving a majority vote on what we do and don't do in terms of policy as well as how we spend the money. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Any additional public comment? Any additional public comment? Seeing none, any board comment? Anne Marie? Oh, so this past weekend we went to the Huli celebration at the Hindu temple. And also, if they didn't have a big celebration, but they, the, the six also celebrated the Hula, Huli Mula. And of course, we have a lot of um, our residents are going into Easter and Passover. So we have a, a lot of our residents celebrating over the next coming months. So happy holidays to everybody. Have actually the good is coming in to serve lunch. That's right. All the township employees on April twelfth. Twelfth. So that's coming, and that's the uh, the sea community to the south is going to come and provide lunch to the township employees that are interested. Yeah. Or Viseki. Viseki. Commissioner Dobb mentioned it, but I just want to remind people that we have the town hall on roads on April the fourth at the summit at seven p.m. Right, we have the uh, water sewer rate study tomorrow yes. at 6. And the ADA on Thursday. Very busy week. Very busy week. Okay. Very good. Seeing no further comment, call for an adjournment. So moved. Second. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Means adjourned. Thank you. Be safe.